In this video tutorial, I'll be explaining briefly how the um, cement production process works. Now, for an overview of the whole procedure, uh, we have this diagram in front of us. Now, the process starts with the excavator, of course, querying uh, materials. What are the materials that are quarried? Well, you have um, limestone, um, and you've got sand and clay. And if you look at the um, diagram, you see that sand, clay, and that limestone that was quarried, um, they have to be mixed in certain proportions. And once these are mixed and grinded, they move on to the kiln, and this is where the heating process takes place. So remember, this whole procedure has to happen because we need to produce the following compounds. So the constituents in cement, they consist of C3S, which is your tricalcium silicate, uh, C2S, which is your dicalcium silicate, your C3A, which is your tricalcium aluminate, um, and the ferrite, which is the um, tetracalcium aluminoferrite. And now, and so all of these four need to be produced now what i have over here at the end that's the uh, gypsum and that needs to be mixed in order to ensure that you've got a stable reaction taking place and in order to avoid uh, flash shedding uh, from happening um so let's move on to the burning process so the burning process that happened inside that kiln if we have a closer look at the exact procedure uh, inside the kiln, well, we can break it down into four separate phases. So up to 750 degrees Celsius, you still have your main components uh, intact. So my limestone, my quartz and my clay and the iron oxides. So that limestone, the, that's the, uh, the limestone that's been quarried and then all of these other elements that you see over here. So these compounds are the quartz, the clay, and the iron oxides. Uh, these are actually, they come from the sand uh, plus the clay. So the clay and sand, the, these two uh, components over here that we have. Okay, so up to 750 degrees, nothing happens. Um, these uh, original components are still intact, but what we know is happening is that if we move on to 950 degrees Celsius, uh, we've got the formation of carbon uh, calcium oxide. Now, this calcium oxide is a result of the decarbonation process of limestone. So, decarbonation refers to uh, the production of carbon dioxide uh, and the breaking down because of the breaking down of uh, the calcium uh, carbonate. So what you see over here, um, and the result is, of course, apart from the carbon dioxide, we also produce uh, calcium oxide. So uh, that's the first step in the burning process. If we increase the temperature even further, up to 1,350 degrees Celsius, uh, there's a reaction that takes place between the calcium oxide that was produced from the decarbonation process previously, plus your silicates. So the silicates they come from your clay, um, from the quartz, so from the sand that you had uh, mixed originally. So you've got a reaction that takes place and you start noticing the formation of C2S. So that's the main um, compound that's produced at 1350 degrees Celsius. And then finally, at the final process, so at the final step of the process at 1450 degrees Celsius, uh, we start noticing the formation of C3A, C4AF, um, and also C3S starts to be produced. Um, so, and that C3S is produced due to the reaction that takes place between the C2S that was produced at 1350 degrees Celsius plus uh, some of the remaining calcium oxide that you have. So this is an overall view of the process. Now once the heating is done, 
we need to cool down the, um, the, the compounds that are produced and that's in order to stabilize our C3S.